Friends, it is a great day in North Dakota. Amen? Amen. Amen. It is a great day in North Dakota. I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be, speaking at North Dakota, I, I, I'm glad to see some people made it to North Dakota. There are at least three folks from the church I served in Redeemer Lutheran in Fridley, Minnesota here. There's at least three of them here. And there's at least uh, uh, three or four people from the church I served at uh, St. Mary Magdalene Lutheran Church. Yes, there's actually a church named St. Mary Magdalene Lutheran. Uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, and in Savage, Minnesota, there's uh, some folks there from that. So uh, I'm blessed and some other folks from various and sundry places. I am just blessed that you all are here today. And, uh, uh, you know, had I known, had I known that we'd get such a gathering here together today like this, I'd have retired more frequently. <laughs> uh, I certainly would have. I, I truly would have done that. Uh, but today we are here today to talk about uh, the topic of walking with Jesus. Now, on, on your last message in a church, or your, this might be my last message from a pulpit, if, if, if you could call this a pulpit, uh, uh, anywhere, anytime, uh, uh, you kind of think, you know, should I get another windshield out here? Should I get a toolbox or do something? Uh, well, I, I kind of was thinking about this particular passage because I have become known as a walking pastor. Um, uh, it, it started out kind of early. Uh, I, uh, when, uh, you, you know that seminarians, uh, well, seminarians, are, are, they basically know all there is about the Bible and know all there is about ministry. I, I don't know if you're aware of that or not, but seminarians, particularly first and second year seminarians, they knew more than you could possibly imagine about what it is to be a pastor. Uh, I was a student pastor at a church, and uh, 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 there I met a uh, uh, a man, my pastor Magnus, and he was retired, and and uh, uh, you know uh, he was one of several retired pastors on on staff at this church, and and you know I, I I don't know I mean I guess in my my seminary expertise I was not all that impressed uh, uh, either him in person or in the pulpit I, I just thought wow, but then I found out that in uh, but prior to retirement he had uh, served for many 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 years a church of thousands, literally thousands. And I had the hard time uh, uh, engaging in that sort of incongruity until I found out that uh, the, the, the lead pastor there took me aside and said that Pastor Moggison here uh, was a walking pastor, that he had worn out many souls in search of souls. As a matter of fact, he walked the streets of that particular place where he uh, was and kept walking and going door to door to door to door to door, inviting people to hear the gospel of Christ and built a church of thousands by being a walking pastor. And I thought, well, being a walking pastor, that, that, uh, that sounds good to me. I should try that out. And so in my first congregation, I was there nine months before I walked away. In my, my second congregation, I, I couldn't quite get people's attention uh, when I was preaching uh, because we had some pretty good preachers there. So I, I, I took to walking on the pews while I preached. Uh, there are at least three people here that can verify that I, in fact, walked on pews while I preached. Now, you might find that to be odd, but it was true, nevertheless. Uh, uh, then, uh, then in my, my next congregation, uh, I, I kind of walked up and down the aisles, picked up a baby one time and preached because they were kind of in the way. And, uh, but I... <laughs> I wasn't going to step on the kid, I mean, for crying out loud. But uh, uh, there are people here who can verify that. They saw it happen. Uh, and, uh, but one thing I started to do is I thought, well, you know, I need to be better about praying. And so I would have concentric, walk concentric circles around the, the congregation and the neighborhood. And, and I got to walking completely around the border of Savage, Minnesota. And I got to think, well, you know, it's better to do it on Sundays because, you know, it's fresh, so I'd get up early in the morning. Well, I got so carried away with myself one Sunday morning that I forgot where I was. Rhonda almost sent the police out for me. Ultimately, I did come back five minutes before church started, and that's kind of funny story. I don't know if the people here who are from Savage know that, but it's true. Then, of course, uh, I, I went to do the same thing in Texas, and I walked around the block. And, you know, everything's bigger in Texas. And the block that I walked around was a fairly substantial block, but there were only two buildings on it. There was uh, F uh, First Baptist and Faith Lutheran, so we walked around that. And, uh, and my, my, uh, my antics as a walking pastor and my reputation as a walking pastor continued as I came here <laughs> until I uh, got to this point. This, this is about when I stopped being a walking pastor. 
and I became a falling pastor. So, uh, and, and for, for those of you who don't know, ask somebody that's been laughing. Uh, but, uh, but the Bible, particularly the New Testament, talks a great deal about walking. And we're going to talk about walking with Jesus today. Let's pray. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit and kindle in us the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and we shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy his consolations through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Gathered friends, may grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God who is our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus who is the Christ. Amen. Um, this has been an interesting year for me. Um, as I've sort of thought about this and think about retiring, it's interesting that, that it happened that I announced my retirement on the exact day, the 50th anniversary of my graduation from high school. And there I mentioned the words that my dad told me. He gave me a watch and a suitcase, and he said, Paul, it's time to go. <laughs> Nevertheless... Um, um, uh, we, uh, uh, today is a special day too in my life. Uh, you know I like this particular passage. I, I picked three of them. Uh, I picked the passage from Romans because uh, it talks about uh, being baptized. Funny thing about today. Today is the 68th anniversary of the water hitting my forehead at the base chapel at off at Air Force Base in outside of Omaha, Nebraska. I was baptized 68 years ago today. How interesting that uh, retirement should happen on a day like today. But it's about newness of life, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Then I, I picked the, the passage from, um, from Acts. Uh, the passage from Acts is, is particularly special to me. There are people here who also know that even long ago and far away, I could not sing. Right, Tom? <laughs> um, and, um, uh, uh, but uh, uh, there was a young adult group that, that I was uh, pa serving as a pastor. But I had some experience with that because I was a part of a young adult group. And we uh, used the song, Peter and John Went to Pray. They met a lame man on the way. And uh, he held out his hand and asked for alms. And this is what Peter did say. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. I love this passage because... It talks not only about, as Jesus did, we do, but also it talks about the joy of the Lord. And then last but not least, I remember a time in my life when I was, uh, shall we say, as Isaiah said, how long will you go limping on two different opinions? Have you ever walked with a limp? It's not fun. It's not fun at all because something's the matter. Well, what was the matter in my life is that I was... Uh, uh, sowing my wild oats on Saturday night and praying for crop failure on Sunday morning. And then I, I remember coming across a book. I forget the author. I forget the thing. But it, it, it just says if you uh, get, it's something like get out of the boat, Pete, or something like that. And, and the, 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 the genesis of the book had to do with this passage. And the main line of the book was simply this. If you want to walk on water, you got to get out of the boat. And that kind of got my attention. And as I have become a pastor and become less of a seminary student and recognize of more that I don't know that I do know, I have learned a few things along the way. And what's interesting is what the Bible does say about walking. But what, is, uh, what, what title fits your walk best? What's the thing that, that best describes? you got four choices right here. The first one is this, the road less traveled. Uh, maybe you like those paths that nobody's been down. Maybe you like those things where uh, people haven't been. They're still sort of kind of maybe a little overgrown by the weeds. Maybe the road less traveled is, uh, is, is the title of your walk. How about this one? Following the leader. You know, that's a comfortable one. That's easy. There's somebody out front. You know, if something happens, if there's a rattlesnake in the path, they'll bite that person first, right? You know, that's kind of what follow the leader's like, you know. But your problem is you're doing nothing but what the leader does. 
Uh, this other one's kind of interesting. Footprints in the sand. Now, if you happen to have a, a poster of footprints in the sand in your home, uh, please forgive me. I don't. Um, uh, but they were very popular uh, through, through much of my young adult life. That was kind of a, that there, was, there was even kind of a, I'd heart, I dare say it wasn't really a song, but somebody said it in a dramatic fashion and recorded it in It was sort of a hit on the radio. Or maybe this one is yours, uh, uh, The Road to Hell That's Paved with Good Intentions. The reason why I have that one up there is because I don't think I said hell enough in the last sermon. (laughs) And maybe, and no parent yet called me up. Uh, They may have said something about it to someone else, but they didn't call me up to say the pastor's saying that word way too much in his sermons, and we don't say that word in our house. So, but nevertheless, you know, it's paved with good intentions. You know, uh, which one of those best sums up your walk. You know, walks are great. I, I, people walk for health. Uh, people walk to be trim. People walk, walk because they have, like, adventure. I, I happen to like walking. Uh, every time I seem to go for a long walk, I get plantar fasciitis. I don't know why that is. I, the fact that I'm 68 may have nothing to do with that. But nevertheless, I do like to walk. I like to get out and go to national parks, walk down the path. It's, the problem is now, as my kids will tell you this, is that they've, been, you know, they've had to, to endure this for me. It, it's not so much what goes up must come down. It's what goes down must come back up. And, you know, if you're going to hike down into the Grand Canyon of, the, of, of Yellowstone, uh, yes, there is a Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone, friends. I'm not mixing metaphors. If you're going to walk down to it, you've got to walk back up to it. 660 steps. That's a little challenging. Nevertheless, uh, 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 there are components to our walk, and, and each component seems to have a, a thing that, uh, well, this is not being a component. Why is it that, oh, there we go. It, they're bo- both of them were contrary this morning. So uh, uh, the four components to walking. The first component to walking is stature. You know, how many times in my life has somebody told me, stop slouching? Stop slouching. You're slouching for crying out loud. And uh, 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 the stature tells how we hold ourselves. Well, as in life, also in faith, how we hold ourselves, how our stature is particularly important, how we appear. Uh, Next is our stride. Now, stride, it it, it rhymes dangerously with something that truly is dangerous, and that is pride. But uh, stride talks about how we move ourselves. Now, I don't know if there are any fans out there of the evil empire, and I, I, what I mean by the evil empire, I'm not talking about anything that George Lucas has come up with. It's what George Steinbrenner has come up with. Uh, the people in the evil empire wear pinstripes and have this very odd little NY on their hats. Um, not a fan of the evil empire, but I am a fi- fan of the guy. Uh, his name was Joe DiMaggio. And uh, many of you may not know Joe DiMaggio, but if you did, if you ever, if you ever saw Joe DiMaggio or a video or a movie of Joe DiMaggio at the plate. He was called Poetry at Bat. And it was amazing to watch his swing, his stride. It was truly amazing to watch that. The only thing more amazing was to watch the splendid splinter, Ted Williams, run the bases, hitting a home run at his last at bat. Pretty, pretty amazing. So that's how I feel about the evil empire, just to let you know that. Uh, two great ball players, two great co- competitors. Uh, but the stride is important. But another thing important is in our walk is our stamina. Uh, guess what? Uh, life is not a sprint. If you think life is a sprint, you're in trouble. If you think following Jesus is a sprint, you're in trouble. It's marathon, stamina. It's how we pace ourselves. It's particularly important in pacing ourselves in following Jesus. And last, our station. Our station is this, where we fit in the parade. And I got a feature for you. Where we do, do we fit in the parade? We fit behind Jesus, not in front of him. How oftentimes we want to get in front of Jesus and uh, do what we shouldn't be doing. Nevertheless, what's your walk like? As I said, it's interesting. Uh, uh, Yes, they had donkeys. Yes, they had camels. Yes, they had horses. They had all of that stuff. But what's interesting to note that the primary conveyance in the New Testament was walking. And it wasn't just going from point A to point B. It talked a great deal about 
how we comport ourselves. It talked a great deal about our lives. It talked about that, and it still speaks to us today. And there are a few things, because it's not just simply going for a stroll. It's about following Jesus. It's about walking with Jesus, and what does that entail? Well, here are a few things, just sort of some things I've picked up along the way about walking with Jesus, some things that I know. Now, here, the first thing that I want you to know about following Jesus is this, and I've said this to you before. I I think I'm a pretty good Christian. I want you to know that. I I think I'm a pretty good Christian. I, 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 you know, I, I got Christian doctrine down pat. I know Christian doctrine, and man, I got all the right answers. Uh, I know the Bible pretty good. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good at the Bible. I think I'm a pretty good Christian. But a follower of Jesus, not so much. I could do a better job at following Jesus. I don't know about you. There's a distinction between those two things. I want you to see that. I could do a lot better job following Jesus. I could do a lot better job every day. I've professed to you that I'm not good at math. Uh, I don't know how many days it is, but since the day I started following Jesus, I still find myself saying, Paul, you could do a lot better job at this. And I think we all could. But nevertheless, here's my best stab at following Jesus. Uh, Walking with Jesus, here we go. Uh, First of all, walking in newness of life. Uh, Again, it goes without saying, uh, we were baptized, we were buried therefore with him in baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. Walking with Jesus is a new walk. It's not the old walk. And guess what? It's new every morning. It's a new thing every morning. It's a new, I, again, I, I can't do the math, but multiply 68 times 365 and throw in the leap years. But every day since I was baptized, it's been a new day to walk with Jesus. I have not successfully done that. I mean, as I've gone through confirmation, as I've gone through, through various uh, uh, Sunday schools, as I've gone through uh, learning at seminary, as I've gone through teaching, I, I might have gotten to be a better Christian, but I've not gotten to be a better follower because being a follower of Jesus is something new every day. My walk with Jesus is a new walk today. My walk with Jesus will be a new walk tomorrow. It's walking in newness of life. And that's pretty exciting as far as I'm concerned. Uh, the next thing with regard to this is that walking with Jesus is a walk of faith. Walking with Jesus is a walk of faith. Uh, Paul writes this one, boy, we walk by faith and not by sight. And, I, and I'm here to tell you that it takes a lot of faith to get out of the boat. It really does. It takes a great deal of faith to get out of the boat. But here's the thing, where do I get this faith from? Paul tells us that faith comes from hearing and hearing from the preaching of Christ. That's so why it's so critically important to be gathered together as a part of the body of Christ. It's critically important to be one in Christ and in this group and to regularly be getting that word of God into our hearts, into our minds, into our brains, into all that we are, into our very soul. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing the preaching of Christ and we walk by faith. We get out of the boat and find out exciting things by faith. Uh, The next is that this is one that I just, I I, I love so much. You know that about me. I'm kind of enthusiastic, just a little. And I'm definitely enthusiastic when I'm walking with Jesus. And I love this again, as I said, I won't won't do that. You know, the last time one of our staff members in this congregation was dancing in church, he uh, ruptured his Achilles tendon and had to have uh, things done to him. So just, if you see Ryan, just don't tell him I said that. <laughs> but I am an enthusiastic guy. Why? Because God does amazing things to us. We're called to do the amazing things that Jesus did. We're called to do those very things, to walk in that, to walk Jesus in that, but here's the thing. Sometimes people think that, you know, this is about, about being faith healing and that sort of, God bless faith healing. I think that's wonderful. But people miss out. It's not so much about, wow, that miracle happened. No, the joy of the Lord has come. You know, here, here I got to tell you something. Something that happens in this church that not many people see. 
Not many people see this. But sometimes, every now and then, like for example, during uh, uh, Feed My Starving Children, someone will get uh, the spirit to inspire them to write a very large check, and a very large check will come in for Feed My Starving Children, and I do mean some substantial checks to, to, to feed thousands of children for a year, and that will come in. And I will stand in the uh, uh, crux of the two hallways, and at the top of my lungs, I will shout, there is joy in the tents of the righteous. I don't know why people are so sad and grumpy around what Jesus does when we walk with Jesus. Why is it that people are so grumpy about walking with Jesus? I don't get this. I don't understand it to save my life. We should be walking and leaping and praising God. There should be such joy in our hearts when we walk with Jesus. That's one I love. Walking in the light. This is a good one. Uh, Walking in the light. Uh, uh, We'll back up. Went too far. It says, and Jesus spoke to them and says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me walks not in darkness, but will have the light of life. Uh, Paul writes this, for at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. I got a secret for you. It's much better to come up to this edge right here with my eyes open, not my eyes closed. I did learn something. But that's not what it is to walk in the light. Now, walking in the light is important. I think it's very, very important. It's good for us. But it's better for others. Here's the, here's the key. Here's the thing I want you to understand. You see, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. But then he says, you are the light of the world. When we walk in the light, we don't just illuminate our path. We illuminate the path of others so that they can follow Jesus. We illuminate the path of others so they can see God's word at work. They can see the truth. And that's why we are light. We're to be light in the world. Jesus says, as I am, so you are as well. And Paul says, walk as children of light. Uh, that, walking in wisdom. Uh, you know, wisdom is an important thing. You know, uh, uh, wisdom isn't quite what you think it is. Uh, wisdom sometimes is, uh, uh, can be a bit confusing, but, but it's really simple. It's the practical application of knowledge, but not necessarily. Solomon wrote this in Proverbs 1, verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Fools despise it. But walking in wisdom, uh, Paul tells us, look carefully then how you are to walk, not as unwise, but as wise. Walking in God's wisdom, walking with Jesus is to walk wisely, to understand God's path for our lives. That's what walking in wisdom is about. Next, walking in the Spirit. You know, uh, this is a big one. Uh, uh, I'll put a couple up here. In order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but walk according to the Spirit. And here's another dandy one. But I say walk by the Spirit and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. Uh, How do you walk in the Spirit? How do you walk in the Spirit? Well, let me give you an example of how you walk in the Spirit. Walking in the Spirit requires listening quietly and carefully at Redeemer Lutheran Church. And again, there are witnesses here today. Uh, Periodically, I'd get the chance to preach, and I thought, uh, well, okay, it's my turn. I thought, well, what am I going to preach about? I did not know. So Tuesday, I went to the very beautiful A-frame sanctuary they have there, and I sat myself down, and I prayed. I prayed and prayed and prayed. Uh, God, what do I preach about on Sunday? Nothing. Nothing. Go in Wednesday. Pray and pray and pray. Crickets. Go in Thursday, Friday. Finally, Saturday, I go in, and I'm there about five, ten minutes, and then I go, oh, 
I get it. And on Sunday, I preached a message that truly resonated with a lot of people. How do you respond when you feel God is silent towards you? Have you ever felt that God is silent towards your prayers? It happens all the time. I, I've yet to meet the person that God, or, or feels that God is silent. Walking by the Spirit requires for us to calm down, to sit down, and to listen. And it might take a long time. Walking by the Spirit requires us to be very careful listeners and patient like we're not normally. We go on. To walk in love, this is a tough one. I'm not real good at love. I'm not a very love. But the, well, I'm not. I'm kind of a grumpy guy. You know that. I mean, you know, as I said, I, I, I'm, I, I'm great at being a Christian, following Jesus. Well, we got a problem there. The first problem about walking in love is that you have to love yourself. And I kind of look in the mirror and it's like, mm, man, I, I know. See, the thing is, is you know me one way. I know me a lot better than, than you know me. And, and I know what's truly unlovely about me and unlovable. That's kind of tough, but to recognize that God loves me, that's pretty tough too. Uh, this is what Paul writes in Ephesians. He says, and walk in love as Christ loved us. <laughs> man, it gets pretty hard and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Uh, again, walking with Jesus talks about changing our life to conform our life to look like his life, which was a life of humility and sacrifice. A life that truly understood that it's the life of the other. You know, um, I, I don't know, but I'm pretty sure that the city could tell me. I'm pretty sure even the DOT of North Dakota could tell me one of the most important statistics I know. See, I, I can tell you, they can't tell you this, I can tell you how many cars drive in to the parking lot at Atonement Lutheran Church on a Sunday. They can tell me how many cars drive by. I love you all, you know that I do. But those cars that drive by, God's calling me to love them too. Calling us to love them. And think about that for a while as we walk with Christ. Uh, walking worthy. Uh, uh, what is it to walk worthy? Uh, well, that could be problematic for some people but, uh, uh, th because they think, well, you know, I gotta, <laughs> I I've used this metaphor before. It's not up there. Th this one didn't make the grade up there. But, I, you know, I, I used to always think uh, uh, people are funny when it comes to God. It's like going to the dentist. You know, people start flossing all of a sudden, br brushing five times a day. Uh, and then, you know, all this craziness only to f go to the dentist and have the oral hygienist tell you, I know you haven't been flossing because they know better. And, and to try to get your teeth clean, they can get your teeth far cleaner. You need to understand that. That's not what this is about. This is not about trying to get your teeth clean and show how good you are. Walking in a worthy manner is to walk the way of the cross, to walk in that humility to walk in the deference to others. It's to walk like Jesus walked. Because that's what we've been called to. Not to be able to spout off all the stuff to show, gosh, I'm so glad we've got a really great Christian as a pastor. But do we have a good follower of Jesus as a pastor? Finally, walking in the name of Jesus. Peter said, I have no silver and gold, but what I do have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. I got what I've got, and I give you what I got, and this is what I give you. Therefore, as you have received Christ Jesus as Lord, so walk in him. Friends, we have uh, come to the point where our paths will diverge. 
That is not suggesting that you're following Christ and I'm not. That's not to suggest that I'm walking with Jesus and you're not. It's to suggest that the Spirit has called us to different fields, different things, but the same mission. As we walk a divergent path, we together will continue to advance God's kingdom. We together will continue to be involved in active discipleship. We together will continue to be involved in loving service and intentional outreach that is Christ-centered, biblically-based, and spirit-led. But we will walk together in that regard, just down divergent paths. And one last thing, if anything we will call, that this is not goodbye. I may see you around, may not. But by faith in Christ Jesus, we shall inhabit eternity with Christ Jesus, who's walked with us all the days of our lives. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, we give you thanks for stirring up in us the gift of your word, the gift that points us to Christ Jesus, who is the very image of the Father. Lord, now in the days ahead, I pray for my dear friends at Atonement that indeed they may be blessed and walk with Jesus. Thank you for the walk that we've had these past years, and I look forward to the walk that we'll continue to have as we approach eternity and your glory. For we ask this in Jesus' name. And all God's saints said, amen. amen.